As technology continues to intermingle with our lives and the world's dependence on fossil fuels dwindles, the humble battery has grown in importance. The market for lithium ion batteries, the most popular battery type, has grown by an average of 21% every year since 2004, and that's expected to accelerate even further as Tesla and Panasonic's joint venture, the Gigafactory, a massive lithium ion battery factory that will double current output begins to ramp up production and as renewable energy continues to get cheaper. So are we moving towards a future where the entire planet is battery powered? There are two big factors that will determine that possibility. One, how light and energy dense we can make batteries. And two, whether we'll even be able to physically manufacture enough batteries. This video covers part two of this question and Henry of Minute Physics is covering part one. I'll link to his video at the end. When asked how many gigafactories the world would need to transition the whole world to sustainable energy, this was Elon Musk's response. Uh, it's about 100, roughly. It's not 10, it's not 1,000, most likely 100. Let's investigate how much truth there is to that statement. Before we deep dive into this question, let's first explore how much energy a gigawatt hour, the main unit of energy we'll be using in this video, really contains. A single battery with one gigawatt hour of storage could power a single 100 watt bulb for 1,141 years. It could allow the Tesla Model S 100D to drive to the moon and back eight times, or it could power New York at peak summer electricity usage for 270 seconds. The Gigafactory in Nevada is expected to manufacture 35 gigawatt hours of battery cells a year by 2020, enough to supply half a million vehicles a year. That's pretty impressive, but last year, 72.1 million cars were built along with 22.5 million commercial vehicles, consisting mostly of large trucks and buses. How many gigafactories would we need to replace current fossil fuel car manufacturing with all electric cars? Let's assume each car would use the same battery as the Tesla Model 3. We do not have a confirmed battery for the Model 3 yet, but Musk has stated it will be between 60 and 70 kilowatt hours, so let's go with 65. Even with Tesla's smallest planned battery, we would need 134 gigafactories to produce 72.1 million Model 3s per year, and this isn't even counting the 22.5 million commercial vehicles produced each year. I'm not convinced that a Tesla truck is really feasible with current battery densities, since a 3000 kilowatt hour of battery power necessary would take about 20 tons of lithium ion batteries. But we're not at the theoretical limit yet, Brian. If battery technology continues to improve, something like a lithium sulfur battery of that capacity could be as light as 6 tons. But regardless, in order to build enough 3000 kilowatt hour batteries, we would need another 20 gigafactories just to replace the quarter of a million trucks being built in North America alone. That's not even including the 22.25 million commercial vehicles in the world which would likely bring the total required gigafactories to replace current automotive production to around 300. So just replacing automotive production alone would be a monumental task that Tesla simply cannot take on alone. And Musk's estimate of 100 gigafactories is a bit inaccurate with current production targets, but Musk did state during the 2016 Tesla shareholder meeting that they could potentially triple the planned output of the gigafactory if the demand was there. If that is true, 100 gigafactories seems fairly accurate. Tesla has equally grand ambitions of providing battery storage for the grid and home too, and have allocated production to the tune of 50 gigawatt hours a year to run alongside the 35 gigawatt hour cell production for this purpose. Let's analyze how many gigafactories the grid would need to become stable under 100% renewable energy, keeping in mind that we do not need to produce all of this in one year. The European Renewable Energy Council optimistically targeted 2050 as the year that Europe could generate 100% of its energy with renewable energy. So let's say we have 33 years to produce the required storage. That statistic of a 1 gigawatt hour battery supporting New York for 270 seconds should give you an idea of how much battery storage will be needed to support a city. But not all the electricity will come from battery, much of it will come directly from the power source as it's being generated. There really is no reason why we could not rely completely on renewable energy supported by batteries and pumped storage. And the European Renewable Energy Council has suggested this breakdown of energy sources to reach that goal by 2050. Let's first look at that suggested wind power capacity at 462 gigawatts. 
We can estimate how much storage this would need by taking a look at Australia's new Hornsdale wind farm, which is supported by the world's largest battery storage facility, consisting of 129 megawatt hours of storage provided by the Tesla power pack. This storage is there to allow the 99 wind turbines, with a capacity of 315 megawatts, to provide stable power to the grid, removing the problems of variable wind speeds. Scaling that 315 megawatts to 462 gigawatts would require 1467 times more storage, or 189 gigawatt hours of storage. A single gigafactory could produce that in less than 4 years. Hydro, biomass, concentrated solar power and geothermal would require no battery storage as they are relatively stable over the course of a day. Ocean energy would require similar storage to wind. Concentrated solar power can store its energy in molten salt, and geothermal in particular has an incredibly stable capacity factor, even beating coal. The capacity factor tells us an energy source's ability to deliver on its maximum possible output. Solar has one of the lowest capacity factors over the course of a single day because it generates 0% of its potential power at night, and thus requires the most energy storage. As a case study for how much storage we would need here, we can take Tesla's project in Hawaii to provide the isolated community of Kauai with a solar powered microgrid. The Kauai project consists of a 13 megawatt solar farm paired with a 52 megawatt hour battery installation. Already we can see that the ratio of batteries to power capacity is much higher and this is on a tropical island in the Pacific Ocean. Europe would likely need a higher capacity to make up for less sun, which would likely reduce the ratio of capacity to storage. This may skew results. Nevertheless, scaling that 13 megawatt solar farm to 962 gigawatts would require 74,000 times more storage, or 3,848 gigawatt hours of storage. Adding in our storage needs for wind and ocean, we get a total of 4,064 gigawatt hours for Europe alone. Europe currently makes up about 13.3% of the world's energy demand. So an estimate, full of assumptions, for the battery storage the world would need is 30,556 gigawatt hours. That much battery storage would allow New York to run at peak usage for 95 days straight without any additional power, which would take 18.5 gigafactories 33 years to manufacture, and with current prices per kilowatt hour of storage would cost 3.8 trillion dollars. This lines up neatly with Tesla's goal to build 10 to 20 gigafactories. With 18 gigafactories running at current production targets, Tesla would be able to produce enough cars to overtake Ford's current market share in motor vehicles with 9 million vehicles, and allow Tesla to produce enough battery storage to help transition the world to a 100% renewable grid over the next 33 years. Another company working to power the world is Anchor, an industry leader in mobile charging founded by former Google employees, who are currently holding a competition for you to win $2,000 and an Anchor power pack by simply creating a one minute video where you share an awkward situation caused by your devices running out of power. The top 10 videos will win the prize. For entry details, just follow the link in the description. Anchor's power banks are simply the best I have ever used. I've been using this 20,000 mAh battery and it charges my phone faster than any of the other power banks I've used, thanks to Anchor's fast charging technologies. This power bank has enough battery to charge my iPhone 7 times over, or it could charge my phone, earphones and iPad Pro once. It's the perfect travel companion and I always carry it in my bag and it only costs $40 right now on Amazon. It's an absolute steal at that price, I can't recommend it enough. I've linked to it in the description as well. Thanks to Minute Physics for collaborating with me on this video, be sure to check out his video right now. We also just released the latest episode of the Showmakers podcast with Minute Physics as our guest, so if you'd like to learn more about how Henry created Minute Physics, be sure to check that out too.